to another episode of Kotlin Bytes. My name is Jacob, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about palindromes. A palindrome is a word or a phrase that has the same characters as it reads forward as it reads backwards. So, for example, race car is a palindrome. It starts with R, ends with R, then A, then A, C, C, and then E. So if you were to reverse the string, uh, it would read the same way. Jello is not a palindrome. What we're going to create today is a function that determines whether a string is a palindrome or not. Let's begin. So I've already created a function. It takes as input a string of text and it returns a boolean. So true if it's a palindrome, false if it's not. I'm going to show you two methods to accomplish this, and then a third one for uh, a, a more advanced palindrome. I'm first going to show you the hard way to determine if a string is a palindrome. And this method uses recursion. Recursion is this concept where a function calls itself from within itself. If I were to say is palindrome, then add some text in here. You can see this little helper icon that identifies that this is a recursive call. It's a recursion point. So what it does is whenever is palindrome is called, it's going to execute this function called is palindrome, which is itself, and it's going to keep calling itself. So recursion could potentially be bad, but if you use it strategically, it can be very powerful. So I'm going to create a conditional. And our first condition is if text, if the length is less than two, so if there's only if there's only one character, for example, like A, by default, a single character is a palindrome because it reads the same forwards and backwards. So we're gonna return true. I'm actually going to pull this out into its own variable. And then I'm going to check the outer edges. Because a palindrome means that the first character matches the second character. The second character matches the second to last character. The third character matches the third to last character, etc. And you keep moving in. And obviously if you have a single character in the middle, it's automatically a palindrome, assuming the other characters are the same. So we're going to compare that two outer edges. We're going to use this function called first, and we're going to compare that to its last character. But now we need to also check all the inside values. This is only comparing R against R, or J against O. Now we want to compare A against A, C against C, and E. What recursion allows us to do is execute this isPalindrome function again, because we've actually already written this code. So what we could do is say isPalindrome, and then pass in a subset of our text a substring from one to text length minus one. The first time we, we run is palindrome, we're passing it race car. The second time it's calling itself, it's only gonna pass this A C E C A. Then it's gonna call itself another time with C E C. And then finally it's gonna call itself once more with E. And E is going to be under the length of two, and it's going to return true. Let me run this, but I want to print out what the current text status is. I'll run it. Our starting phrase is race car. The first time is palindrome is called, it prints out race car. It's then called again, and it's A C E C A. It's called again, it's C E C. Finally, it's just E, and the true is returned here on the statement. For our word jello, you see that it instantly fails because j does not equal o. 
Now I want to show you a much simpler way to compute if a string is a palindrome. This is the complex way. <laughs> the easy way is to do the following. I'm going to return text equals text dot reversed. And that's it. Uh, if, we, if we run this, I'm not printing anything out here, but you can see that the race car is a palindrome and Jello is not. And I think this is pretty self-explanatory. We're just reversing the characters in the string and we're comparing it to itself. This is obviously much easier than the recursive option. However, the recursive option is actually quite interesting and uh, it can be much more efficient in certain situations. And so I wanted to show you both. But the last thing I want to show you is a few more complex, well, actually just one, one more complex option, which is a phrase. A phrase that has spaces and commas in it. So let's run what we have right now and see if it works. Oh, let's do uncomment this. OK, so our function says that it's not a palindrome, however, if we were to remove all of the special characters, it is technically a palindrome. N, N, O, O, L, L, etc. It is a palindrome. I'm also going to add a capital A here to Anna and rerun it. Notice how it thinks that Anna is also not a palindrome. We can fix this with a couple things. We're going to create a new variable and we're going to call this raw text and we're going to set this equal to text. We're going to use a special built-in function called filter. Filter is a function on collections and so it's going to filter out everything that does not match a certain condition. It is the implicit variable in this closure. So if the character, which is it, is a letter or a digit, we're going to keep it. And then we're also going to lowercase everything. And then we're going to replace text with raw text. And this portion remains the same. So all we did was get rid of basically everything that wasn't a letter or a number. And then we made it a lowercase. If we run it now, we'll see that Jello is still false, but Anna is now true. And our no lemons, no melon is also true. And if I were to change this, just to show you, if I were to add an S to the end, it then becomes false. So this is a more complex version of the is palindrome problem. Figured I'd show you guys. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great day.